The Portuguese took a new political direction on Sunday. To analyze the result of the election, we're joined from Lisbon by associate editor of the newspaper Diário de Notícias, Nuno Saraiva. Hello, Nuno Saraiva. Portugal has clearly rejected the socialist government of José Socrates. What message do you think this will send to European Union partner countries and especially to those that have been reluctant to help the country out financially? The message this result sends is that we still have political conditions for very objective stability so that Portugal can meet its commitments. There is also a domestic message in the Portuguese having massively rejected Prime Minister José Socrates. As everyone knows, the memorandum signed with the European Commission, the European Central Bank and the International Monetary Fund was signed by the three big parties, the Socialist Party and the two who are now going to take up governing. Socrates' departure is going to create the conditions for dialogue among the three of them which didn't exist until now, and that is how we can politically sustain within the country all its engagements outside it. Can this political change convey more confidence outside the country, or will having a coalition government weaken confidence still further in the country's capacity to rise to the economic challenges? The early signs are very positive. The markets have reacted very favorably to the election result, which ended up with a clear center-right majority. Interest rates on the Portuguese sovereign debt have already been revised downward. And so the first reaction is good. In addition, European partners now have an objective political reality and all the stability conditions are there to accomplish Portugal's commitments during the four years of this legislature. The leaders of the two parties of the coalition made promises to the electorate. Will the government have political manoeuvring room or is it completely stuck by the compromise reached with Portugal's international lenders? I think the government is bound hand and foot by the memorandum signed with the IMF, Brussels and the European Central Bank. Everything that was said during the campaign was nothing but campaign slogans. Once in power, Pedro Passos Coelho and also the leader of the CDS-PP know that they will be held to the agreements signed with the Socialist Party. The memorandum is the real programme of the government. Pedro Passos Coelho has promised a stripped-down government in keeping with the austerity imposed on the country. What kind of government can be expected? Pedro Passos, Coelho tem condições... Pedro Passos Coelho has the opportunity to make a government with a reduced cabinet, notably by reducing the number of junior ministers. But it will be very difficult, in the framework of the negotiations between the two parties, to make a drastic reduction in the number of ministers. No quadro de uma negociação bipartidária para a constituição de um governo, será difícil reduzir drasticamente o número de ministros. Nuno Saraiva, muito obrigada. Nada.